Uh, good morning, everyone. Whoa, tough crowd. Wait a minute. Good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, uh, welcome to Is Technology Leaving You Behind? Uh, there we go. My name's Mark Whitehorn. All right, no worries. Uh, only on Tuesdays. Today's Wednesday. All right. Okay. Uh, technology leaving you behind. My name is Mark Whitehorn. I'm with uh, how many of you have taken my class? I recognize a few. Yeah, I don't have any more. I've been teaching. Hold on. It's like what I saw. Back on there. We're going there. Sorry. Let me just watch. For swatch, swapping for microphone. Hopefully that uh, takes care of it. Okay, is that live? Why do you turn this one off? Okay, mic check. Can you get another mic? This is turning into a. Neither one of them. Hello, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, guys, I think we have a new microphone here. How do I sound? Okay, great. All right. Mark, back to you. Take two. Take two. All right, take that. I'll take this. Take this. Okay. Um, one more time. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Is Technology Leaving You Behind? Uh, my name is Mark Whitehorn. I'm with uh, DPI Websites, so please call me when you have to get your website. So this is a class meant about how to use different technology, computers, internet, all that stuff. Uh, it's gotten really complicated out there, and because of that, we get frustrated. So I'm going to go over a lot of different techniques. Some of these things may be, you know, you may know already, and it's like, oh, I know this. But there's other things that I'm sure you don't know. So we're going to go over a lot of different stuff. So uh, what we're going to discuss is how to use a computer. So what we're going to talk about We're going to talk about um, what computer is right for you, understanding different web browsers, uh, using YouTube, uh, what are your email options, how to organize your emails, what is the IDX that has to do with the MLS, OK to advertise uh, rules, copyright rules for photos, setting up your profile on Zillow and other sites, how to post on Facebook, and how to post on Instagram. If you give me your card later, I'll email you this presentation. How's that sound? Save your film, OK? All right, and I like questions, so please, at any time, raise your hand, ask a question, okay? Let's start. So
So uh, the first thing I have is drawing a line in the sand. Basically, you have to decide what you're comfortable in doing and what you're not comfortable in doing. Because you go to the, a lot of these classes, like you go to the MLS class, and the first half hour, you're good. And then all of a sudden, they start teaching you all this stuff. And you go, oh, my God, I'm, I, I'm confused. So you just decide what you're comfortable in doing and stick with that. And when you get good at that, then you move on to the next step. You don't have to do everything. Um, the next uh, rule I have is um, you have to have your ducks in a row. You need the right hardware and software to be effective, to work properly. And we're going to discuss that. And then the last thing is um, my rule number one. You know NCIS, the rules, right? I don't know if you watch that. You cannot run your business off of your phone. You're running a million dollar business, multi-million dollar business. And people go, oh, I can do everything on my phone. You can't do everything on your phone. Your phone is an accessory, okay? And you have to realize that and realize that, you know, I got to get past my phone. Okay, so based on that, let's start with which computer is right for you. We're going to talk about hardware first. So do you want an Apple or a PC, a desktop, a laptop, a tablet? And um, the deal is you must be portable and lightweight. You need to be able to work anywhere. So I see a few of you have, you know, small laptops, like that's an Apple Air. I, that's a small PC there. That's great. You put it on your bag, and you can take it anywhere. So uh, that's the whole key is you, you want to be able to pull over to a Starbucks or a Panera or anywhere where there's Wi-Fi and be able to work and be able to plug in. That's the key, no matter where you are. The age of using a, a big, bulky um, you know, desktop, is, it's gone. So the question then becomes, what type of computer should you use? I'm an Apple person. I like uh, the Apple Air. Uh, she has one right there. You've got one there? Great. They're, they're amazing. I bought three of them for my wife and kids. And they last years. And they weigh about two pounds. So uh, I see another one there. Okay. And basically, um, I like that. Okay, uh, this is an ad I got off of Best Buy. I just went to the website. I have no preference of Best Buy other than they have great 12-month no interest financing, which is amazing. So I find that this is probably the easiest computer to use. If you don't want a PC, um, you can go and buy a lot of different brands. Um, if you don't want an Apple, you can buy a lot of different brands of PCs. Um, and once again, you know, just make sure that it's lightweight and portable. That's the key to the whole thing, lightweight and portable. You know, I see people sometimes, these Dell computers that weigh like five, 10 pounds, and I'm like, what is that thing? And basically, you just want to be uh, portable. Okay, the lizard, that's all right. Okay. Um, the next thing are tablets. Um, you cannot run your business off of a tablet. Tablets are accessories, okay? So basically, um, you know, tablets are good for, you know, taking notes, going online, reading things, playing games, but it's not a computer. And then the, uh, the last thing is... Um, you need a mouse. So this is an expensive one. This one's $13. Okay? If you go to Amazon, you can buy a mouse for like 7 or $8. All right? And basically, um, you can't run your business with your fingers and a trackpad. It is just not practical. So what you need to do is you need to get a mouse, and a portable one. It fits in your bag or your briefcase, and you carry it wherever you go. I do it myself. One day I left my mouse at home, and I was lost for the day. It was that bad, okay? Any questions?
Okay, so I don't know who everyone, she wants to say, she says everyone's saying you have to stand off from that, and I totally disagree. Okay, I do this all day for a living, that's, that's what I do. And I'm telling you, you I'm, telling, I'm telling you that you cannot be efficient using your fingers. You're gonna have a lot of copying and pasting and you cannot be efficient doing it with your fingers. You're gonna get frustrated. And the whole key with this class is making sure you don't get frustrated because the people in technology land are doing a great job making your lives frustrating. All right, so that's hardware. Um, you, you have my preferences. Um, once again, you can't run your business off of a phone. You need to um, have a good piece, a good la uh, laptop computer, and it needs to be lightweight and portable. And then lastly, go out and buy a mouse. All right, um, let's talk about the different web browsers. This is another problem that's out there. We have uh, Google Chrome, we have uh, Safari, Apple Safari, Firefox, and Internet Explorer. And yes, have I heard of Brave? No, I haven't heard of Brave, that's interesting. Now you're giving me homework. All right, now I'm gonna have to do research, thank you. <laughs> I like this. All right, I'm gonna check it out, Brave. Good, cool, thank you. So uh, basically, um, Google Chrome is the top of the line. Google Chrome is best. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're using an Apple, um, it comes with Safari. If you're using an iPhone, basically your iPhone um, has Safari. Safari works perfectly well. There's nothing wrong with it. And Mozilla Firefox is another website that uh, works perfectly well. And then there's Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is horrible, terrible. I was gonna use another word, but you know, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> um, Internet Explorer is bad. Do not use Internet Explorer. I don't know why a company like Microsoft after, I don't know how many years in the internet business hasn't been able to improve on that. So if you see that you're having problems online, the first thing you're gonna look at is what browser am I using? And if you're using Internet Explorer, get out of it. Go use Google Chrome. Any questions on that? Firefox works perfectly well, yes. It's just that, no, it's Mozilla. It's, Mozi it's Mozilla, it's a different company and it works perfectly well. Firefox is perfectly good. Um, it's whatever your preference is. Just the bottom line is just don't use Internet Explorer. So it used to, she wants to know what KV Core is using. Um, it used to be that uh, the MLS only worked with Internet Explorer. And they had to change it because more and more people were using uh, Apple computers. Um, and so they changed it. Um, so most things work with Chrome. Okay. Um, so basically, don't use Internet Explorer, use Google Chrome, Firefox and Safari are both okay. All right. How to bring up a web page. This is another thing that's really confusing and a lot of people make this common mistake and it's very frustrating. So here is um, the homepage for you know, Google Chrome, right? You go here, you wanna bring up a website. So typically what you do is you come here to the, uh, the search box and you, you can't see it here on this thing, but there's a search box here and you type in the domain name there to see what comes up. And the problem is when you do that, you come up to a search page. Right, and that's not what you want. You want to go, like here I wanted to go to miamire.com, which is the website for the Miami board, right? So if I go to the search bar, 
and I type in MiamiRE.com, this is what I'm going to get. Right. So this is a common mistake. What you want to do when you want to go to a website is go to the top line here. You see the top? And that's where you type in your website address you want to go to. It's there when you go. She wants to know how you get there. It's all the way on top. Don't type the web address in the search bar because then you're doing a search. And then you go to another page and you don't say, oh, my God, I don't know what's going on. Right? Any questions on that? Right, so she says when you put something in there, typically what you're doing, can you close that door a little bit? Thank you. Um, typically what happens is um, when you type in the search box, you're going to come to the search page and you're going to get confused. You'll start seeing ads and other things. Just to avoid that, don't type things in the search bar. Type things in the top line. If you don't know what the website is, then you're going to have to do a search, correct. And then you're going to have to, you know, scroll through the search results to see what exactly you want. But if you know the website address you want, don't put it in the search bar, put it on the top. All right. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about are what are cookies. This is another thing that's very frustrating. And the people in technology land have tried to make our lives easier, and instead they've made our lives harder. So the way this works is um, they created a system where it, your computer remembers where you've been. For example, the first time you go to a website, you have to download all these graphics, pictures, and stuff. And that could take you 30 seconds. What they're saying is, okay, the second time you go to that website, you shouldn't have to download those graphics again. We should save them on your computer. So this way you don't have to, it takes less time to go back to that website. That's called cookies. Give you a prime example. I read the New York Times online every day. So every day when I go back to the New York Times website, it will automatically open up yesterday's newspaper. Why? Because the computer remembered yesterday's newspaper. But I don't want yesterday's newspaper. I want today's newspaper. Get what I'm saying? So how do we – It's she says it's different from history. It's the same thing as history, exactly. So what you do is the, the solution for this is very simple. What you're going to do is you have to refresh. Anytime you go to a web page and you don't like what you see or it didn't load properly, you have to click on the refresh button. So for example, here on Google Chrome, you see that little circle right there? That's the refresh button right here. So anytime you don't like what you see, refresh. This doesn't look right. Oh, my God. Just refresh. Sometimes you have to do it twice. So there's a refresh on Safari. There's also a refresh, but it's on the other side. It's a circle. Same thing. If you really have to, uh, you know, do a, a, you know, refresh, a hard refresh, you can clear your history, but that's as a last resort. So what there is is a circle with an arrow.
bring me your, bring me your, I, I'm, okay. So you're not on a website now. So, oh, so let's, gotta be on the let's go to a website first. Okay. Uh, first, we're going to go to a website. You see on, on, there's an X here. That means it's downloading. And once it's done, you'll see the circle with the uh, arrow. Okay. And you click on that, and it refreshes it. Oh, you just click on that. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Moving right along. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to tell you about is uh, YouTube. YouTube.com. This is your new best friend. Anytime you have a problem, Go to YouTube. I don't know how to do this. Great. Go to YouTube. Okay, you can learn anything there. Some person said to me, oh, I had to fix a faucet in my house. Where did she go? YouTube. I don't know how to set up my emails on my phone. Where are you going? YouTube. Anything you need to learn how to do, you're going to go to YouTube. So anytime you have a problem, Go there, do a search, and type in YouTube. What? Huh? Yeah, I know. It has lots of ads, but that's okay. That's how people make money. We have to support the Internet. So um, what you're going to do is um, you're going to go here, and um, there's two things you have to look at. You have to check the date of the publication and the length of the video. Those are two things that you have to check. So what happens is you'll come to a video on YouTube that might be three years old. Now technology changes all the time. So that three-year-old video just might not be what you want. So you want to check, get something that's at least six months old or less. The next thing is you need to check check the length. If they can't teach you what to do in five minutes or less, they're talking too much. And some of these video presenters like to talk. So basically what you want to do is just check the, the time and the length of the publication. And you'll see that you'll see that the uh, time is here and then you'll see when it was published here. Any questions on that? Okay, moving along. Um, the next thing I want to talk about are email addresses. So um, this is another, this has gotten really confusing. Life used to be simple. You know, you just logged into AOL and you've got mail and you know, life was easy, right? It's gotten really complicated. So um, there's different types of email addresses that you can have. You can have Gmail, Yahoo, AOL. Your broker can give you an email address, or you can have an email address tied to your domain name. And my answer to you is um, use what you're comfortable in using. Okay? I've been using my Gmail for years. That's what I'm used to. Great. Then use that. Okay? Don't, you know, don't freak out over what I should be doing and stuff. Use what you're comfortable in using. There's, how come I don't have icons? There's a lot of different examples I don't have up there. No. If these are, you know, the page is only so long, and I can only show so many samples, okay? You know, uh, there's uh, Yahoo. I have Yahoo there. There's, there's Hotmail. I mean, there's a lot of them out there, okay? Uh, BellSouth.net, all right? All right, so um, where am I? Uh, where's the mouse? Okay. Do you 
you have that up, that hit, that bar, there we go. Okay. All right. So from a marketing standpoint, you want to have a, a domain name, a website address, and then you want to have a website address, I mean an email address that matches your website address from a marketing standpoint, from branding. So for example, if your name is Sally Smith, you would have a domain name sallysmithrealtor.com. And then you would have an email address matching that, like sally at sallysmithrealtor.com. I'm going to show you how to set that up. It's really easy. Yes, ma'am. Multiple domain names? Okay. Um, so she, she wants to know what if you have multiple. E so are you saying email addresses or multiple domain names? So typically, if you Google yourself, you're not seeing the email address. You're seeing just multiple domain names. And that gets really confusing. Um, all right, we'll talk about how to get rid of it later. All right. Okay, so if you want to get a domain name and you want to set up an email address for that, what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to go to GoDaddy.com and you're going to purchase a domain name. Okay, now I like GoDaddy. The reason I like GoDaddy is they have great customer service. There are some, uh, there are some companies that are a little cheaper and basically I don't like them because they don't have good customer service. So for an extra dollar or two a year, you're gonna use GoDaddy. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna buy your domain name at GoDaddy and you're gonna sign up for the email service. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get on the phone and you're going to call GoDaddy and you're going to say, I just bought a domain name and I just bought an email service. Can you help me set up my email on my computer and on my phone? And they will stay on the phone with you for an hour setting it up. Simple as that. Is there a charge for that? No. So it'll go... So she wants to know where the email will go. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yes. All right. Um, sure. Yes. Go, GoDaddy will, will set up the email for you. They charge like $3 a month for the email. Uh, but GoDaddy does that. And the thing about GoDaddy is they have amazing service. They host the email, okay, yes. And they have amazing service. So it may cost you a dollar more here or there, but you want someone to call 24 seven if you have a problem. Because I have one person she's dealing, she has, she has a G Suite you know, with Google and she's having trouble with her emails and there's no one to talk to. Okay, um, next, emails. You want, what was rule number one? Do you remember? You can't run your business off your phone. It's the same thing with your emails. You can't just check your emails on your phone. The email, the phone is an accessory. If something goes wrong, you lose your password or whatever, at, you need to have your emails backed up on your computer, all right? Because you are running a million-dollar business. You have contracts. You have uh, other things that you need to store and make sure you have accessibility to at any time. And if you try and do it on your phone or if you try and use the Gmail app or things like that, locked out of it for whatever reason, then basically you lose all that information. So you need to back up all these things on your computer. 
can you get rid of old emails on your phone? Absolutely. You just have to – without losing what you have on a computer? Yes. So what happens is that they both – the computer and your phone will both download the, the emails, and it will stay on your computer, and you can start swiping and deleting them on your phone one by one. Yeah, I, I've never done that. I'm just – too lazy to do that, so I have like millions of emails on my phone, but that's why we keep buying new phones with more memory. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> so um, basically, um, what you have to do is you have to set up your email on your computer and sync it with your phone. What you're gonna do is if you use a PC, you're gonna use Outlook. This comes with your PC. If you're using an Apple computer, you're going to use Mail, which also comes with your, your computer. If you uh, look on the uh, Apple, you'll see a little like the postage stamp. It's the Mail program. And what you need to do is you need to set up your emails with that. So the question is, how do you do that? And the answer is YouTube. Exactly. Go to YouTube. How do I set up Gmail on Outlook or Mail? Right? Go there, type in, how do I set up my email using Outlook? And then once again, you're going to look for two things on the, on the videos. You're going to look for the date, make sure it's current, and the length. If they can't teach you how to do this in under five minutes, they're talking too much. It's really easy to do, and I'm not going to teach you how to do it because I don't want you to walk out of here saying, did he press the right button or the left button? No, no, no. You're going to go open your computer. You're going to go open Outlook. Then you're going to go to YouTube, type in how to set up my email in Outlook. You're going to watch a video. It's going to say, step one, do this. Pause the video. Go do it. Go back to the video. Hit play. Step two, do this, hit pause, go do it, go back and forth, back and forth. And this way you have everything backed up on your computer. How many of you back up your computers? One hand. Anyone in out there land? <laughs> so um, um, I had multiple questions here. Um, Outlook is for a PC, uh, you have a, an Apple computer, you're going to use Mail. Mail, it's there. If you go to your, your menu bar, you're going to see a postage stamp. That's Mail. Um, backing up your computer, you can use the cloud. Um, I don't trust the cloud. I'm sorry. It's just me. I, what I do is I have an external hard drive. You can go on Amazon or you can go to Best Buy and you can buy an external hard drive for like $100. And then it plugs into your computer and you can back it up. This way I know it's right there on my desk in case, you know, we, we, the whole internet crashes or anything like that. I have everything right there. Just me, you know. Um, and you have to back up your computer at least twice a week. I usually do it at night. Plug it in at night, and in the morning, it's backed up. Yes? Sure. So what she wants to know how the format is on, on this. Uh, so basically what happens is um, it will create multiple backups with a timestamp on the date. For example, I use an, uh, an Apple, it has a program called Time Machine. And it will just keep adding and adding and adding based on the time, and when it runs out of space on the, on the hard drive, it de automatically deletes the oldest ones. It makes room for it. I use an Apple, and it's called Time Machine. It's in the uh, preference folder. It's really simple. You just plug in an external hard drive. You go to Time Machine, and you identify the hard drive, and it does the rest for you. If you don't have an Apple computer, um, there's on most computers have some program for backing up. So just uh, do a search 
on your hard drive, uh, just type in backup and see what program your computer has. All right. Do I have a preference for a hard? They're a commodity item. There is no, you know, it's not like a certain brand. Um, just I'm saying for $100, you just, you, know, you can get one, you'll get like a terabyte of data on there. All right. And that will last you a long time. All right. Um, setting up your, uh, your email. Uh, once again, you know, if you use Gmail, don't use the Gmail interface because, uh, once again, you can't back it up. You know the, the app for Gmail? It's not good enough. You need to use either Outlook or Mail so everything is backed up on your computer. Um, okay. Um, junk folders. Here's, a, here's another problem with emails. You're getting emails and they're going to your junk folder. You're getting leads and they're going to your junk folder. And you have to check your junk folder six times a day. So it's easy. If you're using mail, there's a, on, the, on the left hand side, there's a thing that says junk. Just click on it and scroll through it. If you're using your phone, you just uh, hit the back button, go to the folders, and you'll see a, a folder for junk. It's just that you're getting leads and they're going to your junk folder. What? Spam. Can I use? So what I typically do is when I send someone an email, I also send them a text message saying, I just sent you an email. Please check your junk folder if you don't see it. You can call them too. You can call them. That's so good. Yes. You know, yeah, a lot of people don't like to call. They like to text. Yeah. All right. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is what is the IDX? This has to do with the MLS. So the IDX is a system that allows you to import the MLS into your website. And what it does is it shows up with all the, um, the, the pictures and, and the address and the description, but it leaves out the listing agent's name and number. So when you go to a realtor's website and you see thousands of listings, it's not their listings, it's other people's listings. So for example, here's one of my clients. Uh, this is Bonnie Izzo. Uh, Bonnie works in uh, West Broward. As you can see, those are West Broward areas. And this website has about 50,000 listings in it, and it updates automatically every day. So if you click on Pembroke Pines Homes, up come all, hang on, up come all the listings. And when you click on one of the listings, it shows up with the address, the pictures, the description, but it leaves out the listing agent's name and number. So if you want uh, more information on this property, you have to contact Bonnie. Any questions on how the IDX works? The IDX is a system that allows you to import the MLS into your website. So all the listings from the MLS are now on your website. She wants to know how you do it. So what happens is when you hire a company to do your website, the first question you're going to ask them is, does your system have the IDX? If they look at you kind of funny, run. Yes.
I'm not familiar with that system. I, I'd have to see what you're talking about. I'm not familiar with that. There's a lot of different ways to get the IP. All right, so basically this is a system that allows you to import the entire MLS into your website. So when your clients go to Zillow, you mentioned Zillow, and they start searching on Zillow, the problem with Zillow is a third of the listings in Zillow are no longer available. And you need to say to them, do me a favor, stop going to Zillow, a lot of those properties are not available, go to my website. Because on my website, everything is available. That's the trick today. Right, so the, the challenge is when you send things um, from the MLS, um, people don't have an easy time using it. And they get frustrated. This is your clients. Your clients get frustrated and they go, that's not what I wanted. She didn't get it right. So then they end up going to Zillow. Zillow has, um, Zillow has the agent, the listing agent's name, plus they have other realtors there who are advertising. So if your clients are going to Zillow and they don't like what you're sending them, there's a good chance they will call one of these other realtors. So you have to get them out of Zillow. And the way you do that is you have to have a proper website with the MLS feed. So you say to them, do me a favor, stop going there. It, it's not accurate. Go to my website. And then you can send them links from the website with listings and stuff like that. It's very easy to do. There's some confusion about IDX and I need to go over this. Um, there was a field in the MLS. You asked this question before, uh, you did. And um, it's, there was a field called okay to advertise and the boards got rid of this about five years ago. So the way it worked is um, it used to be if it said yes on okay to advertise, you could take someone else's listing and you could put it on places like Craigslist or things like that and you could make it look like your listing. So the boards got rid of this because it got really confusing. So now if you want to get, if you want to advertise someone else's listing, you have to get written permission. There's different ways to get written permission. There's a form which no one uses or you can email or text the listing agent in order to get permission from the person. Let me explain the confusion on this. Here is this listing on Bonnie's website. It was brought in from the IDX. Does she need permission to have this listing on her website? No, it's not hers. No, you don't need permission because this is the IDX. The IDX is allowed. But now Bonnie comes along, she goes, wow, look at this house. This is gonna sell in two minutes. I wanna advertise this house in other places. Now she has to get permission. So on your website, you don't need permission. Anywhere else you have to get permission. To have the IDX, you have to have a membership with the MLS. As long as you have a membership with the MLS, then you can have the IDX. If you're a member of the board, you can have the IDX on your website. Right, so it, it's a really simple procedure. All right, um, next, moving right along. So, right, if a client calls you and says, hey, I found this listing on your website, I really like it, you, look, you say, oh, tell me the address, tell me the MLS number, then you go into Matrix, you look up the listing agent, you call them and you say, hey, I got a buyer, can we come over and see it? Copyright rules for photos. 
This is where you get into trouble or you get sued. The rules are simple. If you don't own it or have written permission, don't use it. Okay? Don't use it. So, for example, here we have uh, MLS, right? Here is um, a, a, list, a picture on the MLS from a listing. I need a picture of a house, or I need a picture of the front of a condo building, or I need a picture of, you know, a, a pool in a certain condo building. I know I'm going to copy it from the MLS. Don't do it. If you do, the boards will send you a fine of $500. Ouch. Well, how are they going to know? Well, it's simple. There's a, there's a watermark all over the place. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to crop the picture, get rid of it. Then they start looking at the clouds, you start looking at the leaves on the ground. How did you get those clouds in the exact same position? Right? Go take your own pictures. Anywhere you go, take pictures. Um, copyright rules, Google Images. Oh, it's on the internet, it's free. No, it's not. If you copy a picture off of Google Images or anywhere like that, you're going to get a lovely letter from the lawyers representing Getty Images, and they're going to find they're going to sue you for like a thousand dollars. So what you're going to do is either take your own pictures, or um, there's a website out there called um, Pexels, Pexels.com. And these are free pictures. The challenge is they're not always great, but they're free. Or what you're going to do is you're going to go, if you don't like those pictures, you go to Shutterstock.com, and then those pictures will cost you like $15 a piece, and the quality is better there. Just don't copy pictures. You're just asking to get sued. Sure. So... You can copy pictures from government websites like local municipalities because that is, that is now um, public property. So you can go to, um, you know, like your local, you know, Pompano, city of Pompano or city, right. Right, those are fine. Uh, you can use those. Don't go to Chamber of Commerces because those are private organizations. But if you go to a government website, you can use those pictures. All right, um, setting up your profile on Zillow. Uh, the thing is that when you have a listing, you're gonna show up on here for free. And you need to have your picture and your information show up. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go to zillow.com, you're gonna sign in and set up your profile. So this way, when you have a listing and when and that listing shows up on Zillow, your information is um, is there. We all hate Zillow. Are they trying to put realtors out of business? I teach a class on that. All right. Um, yes. Listings. The the real estate boards automatically post the listings on Zillow. So, yes, your listings will automatically show up on Zillow. Um, all right, next, Facebook. Um, do we all have a Facebook business page? Yeah, you need one. You're going to actually, you're going to use your personal page, but you do need a business page as well. All right, so. Okay, well, I, I see, I, now, now I'm getting to you. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your personal page, and it says here, create, see that? Over here, you see the, right? You go to your personal page, and on the top it says create. It's the same thing, just in a different language. So you want, you want to have it in English, you have to go to your profiles. 
and you have to do your settings and change the settings there. So, okay, you want to know where, how to change the language in Facebook. Um, you, you're going to go to YouTube, and you're going to type in how to change the preference language in Facebook. You think I'm joking. You know, I'd use it all the time. I, I bought these new earbuds for my phone, right? And only one was working, not the other one. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to the Apple store. So what did I do? I went to YouTube. And in two minutes, there was a video. A guy taught me what to do. There's a button on it. You press it. You reset it. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. So you're going to go here. It says create. And you're going to create a... Um, a page, see that? And it's called a local business page. You're going to name the page, you know, you put in like something like uh, your name and the word realtor or something like that. You know, personalize it. And then for category, you're going to put in real estate. And then it's going to ask you for your address and stuff like that. You, by, by law, you have to put your broker's address. You can't put your home address. So you want to put, you know, location and the address here and stuff like that. Don't put in your home address. Address. By law, the minimum you have to have is the name of the brokerage and the address. You should put the logo because it adds credibility, but yes. You do that in the artwork for the banner. No, we're, this is Facebook. This is different. If yes, if you set up a website with me, I after the site's done, I sit down and analyze everything you're doing to make sure you're doing it right. And then I become like a drill sergeant. I say, okay, this is what you're doing every day. You know? Um, yeah, give me five minutes, okay. Um, first I first I have to teach. Um, what you, what I also want you to do is I want you to go to the personal page of your on Facebook. And on the left-hand side, if you scroll down, there's a section called Find Friends. And I want you to have friends. How many friends should we have? Give me a number of 3,000. Serious. You need to have 3,000 friends on Facebook, your personal page. And none of them should be, yeah, and none of them should be realtors. Okay? Because how much business are you getting from other realtors? So you're going to get 3,000 friends every day for 10 minutes. Just go on Facebook, go to Find Friends. And just, you know, 10 minutes a day, and you'll in a month or two, you'll be up to 3,000. Don't think. Well, people you don't know. Exactly. You're a salesperson. You have to meet people you don't know. You have to. Uh, on your personal page. You know why? Because as a realtor, you have no personal life. I, I'm, go to your Facebook personal page. No, I'm telling you. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. All right, you're, you're all right. Because, because be, you never get a lead from Facebook because you're not using it properly. That's what I teach. That's so. That's what I teach. So, don't argue with me. Listen. <laughs> um, there, can you connect IDX to your Facebook business page? There are a few companies that do that. I, I've seen them, but they're rare that do that. 
what you do is you link from your, your website to, and I'll show you how to do this in a second, okay? So, okay, so, shh, I'm getting restless here, uh, ladies, I'll be done, I'll be done in 10 minutes, is that okay? All right, and then, and then, and then Tom's buying us all lunch, all right? <laughs> all right. The maximum amount you can have is 5,000. You need to go to your personal page and get 3,000 or more friends. You're going to, I'm sorry, this is making a face. It'll take you a month or two, but you will get there. You're going to invite these people to like your business page, but only 10% of them are going to like your business page. The rest are going to ignore you. So the reality is you're going to be posting from your personal page on Facebook. And the question is, what should you post? So let me go into that. So every time you post on Facebook, I'm just going to skip along here, you need to have a link on Facebook that goes back to your website. So for example, let's say you want to put a link, you get a new website and you want to promote this website on Facebook. You come here, you see this, the URL? This is your website. You come here to the URL and you copy it. Then you go to Facebook and you type in, write a post. And what you do is you write a few sentences and then you paste in the link. Copy paste, right? So what happens is they, Facebook will automatically import the picture and then the post will look like this. So now if they click on the picture, it takes them out of Facebook to your website. Anytime you post on Facebook, it needs to have a link going back to your website. So you go to your website that has the IDX. You find a property that you say, well, I want to promote this property. You take the link to that property on your website. You go to Facebook. You write a post. Look at this amazing house. Just hit the market. Hurry up. Call me. And then you paste the link and you post. Do we need permission to do that? No, it's the IDX. It's a link to the... Yes, but you're linking to the IDX on your website. Who did I lose? Yeah. I'm rushing this along because you were getting restless. All right. Okay. So what you do No, I teach it at the Miami board. Yeah. Yes. No. Thank you. What you're going to do is every time you post on Facebook, you want to have a link going back to your website. So this way, when they click on the picture, it takes them back to your website, takes them out of Facebook. Sure. So the, why do you post on a personal page, not on the business page? The challenge is that you're going to ask for friends to like your business page, and they're not going to do it. So the bulk of the people you know are on your personal page. 
You also have things on your website like we put a blog page on the website. We automatically blog for you because most people don't have time to do it. So you find an article that you like from your website, you copy the link, and you paste it into Facebook. So now it links back to that's where you succeed in Facebook. If it doesn't link back to your website, people don't call you. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to skip along here. Um, we're going to skip along here. Instagram. Instagram, you're not going to get a lot of business off of Instagram. You're just going to get a lot of likes and you're going to get a lot of people who just know your name. Okay? But you can't link back to your website off of Instagram. But Instagram is a social thing. Let's say you go to some uh, event, like there's a new development, and you go to the event there. You say to someone, oh, do me a favor, take a picture of me next to the model of the building. And they take a picture of you, one of those square pictures. And then you go and you post it on Instagram. So people go, to, oh, look, she was in this development. Look, man, she's everywhere, right? That's what Instagram does. So, for example, it says here, this is Oliver. Um, he's a buddy of mine. He says, today's activity on the Miami River. And then he took a picture of on the Miami River. So that means, you know, you know. Standing on the dock. So the trick with Instagram is called hashtags. Let me explain to you what those are. Hashtags are groups of people, and these are people that you don't know. Now, there's two types of hashtags. There are um, global and local. So global is, you know, like big, and local is, you know, local, right? So, for example, here I'm typing in here in Instagram – and I typed in hashtag realtor. And this will show me all of these big global groups. The problem if I do hashtag realtor, there's millions of posts in that, and your chances of showing up are slim. So what you want to do is you want to go and use local ones, like here. Um, here, like hashtag realtor has 1.6 million posts. You're not going to show up. But here, if I type in hashtag Brickle, only 123,000 posts. So anyone following that group, there's not that many people following that group. You have a better chance of showing up. So what you're doing is you are, um, here's another one, Coral Gables, you start typing, and then all these things show up. So here's Coral Gables Living, 27.6 thousand posts. When you're typing your post, you type in hashtag Pompano Beach, and you'll see a list of all these groups show up. And you choose the groups that you want your post to show up in. And then you start getting in front of people you don't know. So that, how do they connect with you? That's the challenge with Instagram. Um, they can't click on anything to go to your website unless they go to your profile, and then they have to click on the link there. But a lot of people don't do that unless they really want to get a hold of you. So they'll just like you, and that's it. So this is not the thrust of what you're going to be doing. The, the bulk of what you do is on Facebook, where you're linking back to your website. This is just an add-on social thing to, so people know, oh, she's out there. Oh, she's been there. Oh, she's been there. Oh, she's been everywhere. So you go to, you go to Facebook, I mean to Instagram, I'm sorry. Like here's a post that I did. Um, that's iced tea, by the way. Um, so you go here. You click on um, the little plus sign, and you start typing. Um, here I just said, what a great way to end the South Florida day. Greetings to everyone up north. I did this in February. And then I typed in hashtag, and then I typed in Miami Beach, and all these groups from Miami Beach showed up. And so y this is just in addition to Facebook.
the little you click on the little plus sign it'll ask you if you want to upload a picture or take a picture and then after you put in the picture then it's going to ask you to write your text you write your text and then you start typing in hashtags All right, um, that's the end of the class. Uh, I just got a minute to tell you what I do. My company creates websites for realtors. I gave all of you my flyer. Uh, these websites are linked to the MLS. So they have uh, the IDX, so that has all the listings. So this is Guadalupe. She has uh, for sale, for rent, new developments, existing developments. So here she works in um, South Miami-Dade County. I have other clients who are in this area as well. And it brings up all the listings, with, but it leaves out the listing agent's name and number. We also have all the developments. We have the new developments and the existing developments with all the information and the floor plans. So if your client is interested in one of the developments, you just send them a link to your website for that development, and then they have all the information and the floor plans and everything. Um, it will automatically post for you on Facebook. Um, we'll do, it's a bunch of stuff that you get off of here. Yes. The at symbol. Um, so that's similar to hashtags, just, you know, yeah. Um, so anyways, For the new developments, what we do is we get the information from the developer. So it does have like a, a general starting price, yes. Right. We're constantly updating those, yeah. And then what happens is as things come online in the MLS, it automatically shows up there, the, all the listings from the MLS. There's two costs for one of these sites. The design is um, $300. The design is $300, and then the monthly hosting is $59 a month, and that includes the, um, the IDX, it includes changes to the website, and it also includes training on how to use it. Um, it's a very simple process. If you're interested, um, just call me. I ask you some basic information like your name, and then we takes a couple days to set up, and then um, basically uh, once it's done, we meet and I train you on how to use it. The domain name, it, it, if you have your own domain name, great, we use that. We just need to go into GoDaddy and change the settings. Or if you don't have one, we purchase it for you and it's included in the fee. Any questions on that? And yeah, I just basic information, your name, things like that. If you don't have a, dona a domain name, we purchase it for you. We have all the photos and everything. The only picture we don't have is yours. Yeah. So we can post, automatically post listings to Facebook and LinkedIn. And then, um, there's a blog page on there which allows you to post on Facebook. That's what, when we meet, I train them to do that. Five minutes a day posting on social media and you're ahead of the game. Instead of hiring someone for like, you know, a lot of money, you just, you know, five minutes a day and you're ahead of the game. It's real simple to do that. How many pages of the website? We don't count pages. So typically with all the developments and the search pages, you'll have over a hundred pages, but if you want to add pages, we, you just give us what you want and we do it and it's all included. We don't count pages. Um, if you go to dpishowcase.com, dpishowcase.com, you're right. I need a contact. Next time I come here, I will have a contact page on there. Yeah, it's on there. And um, yeah. Yeah, dpishowcase.com has my contact information. 
And uh, yeah, just call me. It's a really simple process to do. Did I teach you anything today? Well, thanks for your time, everyone. Yes, sure.